Hi, everyone, and thanks, Stephen, for introductions. And uh, I'm very, uh, my name's Ni. Uh, I'm a PhD student from at Oregon State University. And I'm very happy to be here today to present our work. Uh, this is efficient batch of reverse procedural random functions which applic with applications to private set intersections. And this is a joint work with uh, Kalesnikov, uh, Kumarisan, and Rosulex. Uh, in this work, we propose an efficient protocol uh, that uh, <laughs> apply private set uh, intersection, which is uh, an interesting problem in crypto. So let's see a very simple scenario to see uh, what is private set intersections. So for example, here we have two parties, here is Alex and Bob. Uh, each party have the sets of items, here is S and Y. And now they want to compute the intersection of their sets, which I'll review any additional information. So for example, uh, Alex doesn't know the rest of Bob items, and similar to Bob, he doesn't know the rest of Alex's items. So this is the problem of private set intersections. So private set intersections have a lot of applications. And what I'm showing here is Kantas discoveries. So for example, we have Alex. Uh, she has the phone. She has her address book. And she wants to use Skype. On the other side, we have Bob as Skype server provider with her, his customer data. And now Alice wants to know which of her friends use Skype so that she can chat with them. So clearly, they want to compute the intersection of their sets. Yes, so however, Alice doesn't want to review her address book because this is her uh, personal information. And similar to Bob, he doesn't want to review his uh, customer data because of customer privacy. So we need private set intersection here. So when we think about private set intersections, we might come up with following solutions. Here, Alice uh, and Bob have a set of x and y. They symbolically hash x elements of x and x element of y. Then uh, Bob send the hash value to Alex. Alex simple compare hash uh, two sets of uh, hash values and output whether it's intersections. So this protocol is very fast because we just need to compute the hash value, right? And, and they have a low communi communications, yes. But unfortunately, they insecure because it leaks the privacy of Bob in books. So why? So for example, X come from small domains like telephone numbers, about 10 numbers. Alex symbol hash um, billion elements and then compare with the hash value just received from Bob. So Alice can know uh, the Bob inputs. So this is the reason why this uh, protocol called naive. However, it's insecure PSI protocols. So uh, to handle these problems, they have several PSI protocol has been introduced. And the state of the art uh, PSI protocol were proposed last year by Binkas. Uh, Sinaida, Segev, and Joner. And the pencil case of private set intersection is private equality test, where two parties want to know where the two strings are equal. So the current BSI protocol, they do private equality tests using obliverse transfer extensions. And they also propose uh, a efficient hashing technique to efficiently uh, transform private equality tests into private set intersections. So our main technical contribution is to improve private equality tests. So let's look at the current uh, private equality test protocol of uh, Pinkas, Snyder, Segev, and Jona. So we have uh, Alice had X and Bob had Y. We want to know whether X equals Y and nothing else. So here, x equals 0, 0, 001, for example, and y equals 0, 0, 1, 1. So the main idea of their protocol is compare bits by bits of x and y. So how they can do it? They use a circuit black box called Oliver transfers. So Bob symbolizes uh, random k-bit strings for 0 and for 1. And now Bob and 
Alex run of liver transfer, where Alex inputs in her first big K0. So at the results, Alex receives uh, a string indicate for her first big. This is string zero. And on the other side, Bob doesn't know anything about Alice's inputs. So this is the definition of, of, of Livia transfer. So they do the same thing for the second and for the third bit. So now Bob uh, takes a string from OT, indicates for her his input bits. Here is, his input bit is 0, 1, 1. So he takes a string for, for 0, for 1, and for 1. So uh, he XLR them and send to Alex. Alex also take a uh, string from OT. She received string 0, string 0, and string 1. She XLR them and compare with the strings just received, with the XLR value just received from Bob. And Alex can output whether it's e equal. So this is the private equality test of uh, current PSI protocol. And if we look at this protocol, they compare bit by bit of x and y. And our idea is we want to replace several one of two OTs with only one one of n OTs. So, and actually, uh, the current PSI protocol, they use uh, OT tension that's proposed by Kalesnikov and Kumar Kumarisan 2013. So it means that they can compare only a bit of x and a bit of y. I can show you why they just do it. And at the result, they n value equal to 2 power of 8. So it means that their protocol still depends on the length of x, at well as the length of y. And they, they also need several number of OTs to do private equality tests. So our work, we propose uh, OT tension that can work for any value of n. So here we propose um, for n infinite numbers, and as a result, we just only, we just need only one OT to do private equality test. So here is an, another observation for previous protocol. So if we put this protocol in a black box, and if X, uh, if Alex ha has the input X, and Bob has input K. Here is K in the six, six blocks, this one. And now, uh, Alex, uh, after pro running protocol, Alex received the XOR value of 0, 0, 1, string 0, 0, 1. So we did say it's the F of X. So it means that Alex learns only one F of X. And Bob knows, uh, Bob knows six blocks. blocks. He can compute, any, uh, compute F of Y for any Y. So the very important property here, if x not equal y, f of y looks random to Alex. So this is exactly Oblivious for pseudo-random functions. That's were proposed by Fred Mai, Aishai, Pinkash, and Roy Go 2005. And uh, moreover, if f, well, Bob send the uh, f of y, I mean uh, x or values to Alex, uh, Alice symbol compare f of x and f of y, and he can she can output whether it's e, uh, equal. So this is private equality test protocol. So the rest of my talks are focused on Oblivious transfer extensions. We will uh, show the ori original one of two OT tensions, and then to them to one of n OT tensions, and our protocol is one of infinite OT tensions. Then we will show the, the relationship between uh, one of infinite OT tension which uh, our OPF instance. Uh, I mean here OPF is the kind of relaxation uh, OPF and I will explain more about this one later. And we apply our OPF on PSIs. As a result on CME on its PSI, we have three times faster than the current PSI protocol. And as I said, uh, the current PSI protocol, uh, they, the, the, the number, they, they depends on the length of OT, uh, the, or the length of uh, items. So for our paper, we remove the, this, uh, the dependence on the length of items. So let's go to uh, oblivious transfer extensions. 
So the main idea here, we can do many OTs based on the few OTs and some symmetric key. And this idea first proposed by Beaver about decades ago. And now I turn to describe a very famous and uh, efficient uh, OT tension protocol that was introduced by Aishai, uh, Kalyan, Yechim, and Piachak, 2003. So the main uh, the idea is Alex, the base OT here is Alex choose uh, random KB strings T1. I uh, see compute uh, another string T1 XOR. On the on the other side we have both. He compute he have one bit string here at one. If S1 equals zero, Bob receive uh, the first column here T1, and if S1 equal one, Bob receive a second column here T1 XOR. So it means that Bob will receive a Q1 and the values it depend on his choice bit the S1. So this is the OT uh, oblivious transfer tensions. Uh, op sorry, oblivious o uh, transfer definitions. So now they they repeat the previous step k times, and they use the same R. So as the results, uh, Bob receive uh, k column of Q. And the value of QI depends on uh, the bit SI. So now they use a, a very cheap crypto technique called virtual random generators to extend the length of OT matrix, uh, the length of OT to N. And N here is very larger than K, N about 2 power of 20. So I'm arranged to get the, OT, the matrix T and matrix T XR. So I'm saying here is the OT matrix. So now if we look at the OT matrix by row, and if we say TI is a row number I of uh, first matrix, and if RI is a bit number I of R, so a row number I of second matrix equal to TI, and also QI equal to TI. So I'm saying here all of them is subscript. So if I equal one, the row number I of second matrix equal to TI X or one, and QI equal to TI X or X. So it, so it means that I come from one, uh, zero L one, one bit, and uh, QI equal to TI X or RI bit Y and X. So now we, ju we just uh, focus on the rows of OT matrix only, and if Alex Input e now Alice input e i and Bob input e x. So Alice now ti he can com she can compute hash of ti's. Bob uh, receive qi. Bob can compute hash of qi and hash of qi x or x. So the very important property here is ti equal to qi or equal to qi x or x. It the value it depends on i. So now it means that uh, one of hash of QI or hash of QI X or X equal to TI and, and all the values look random to Alex. So in other words, Bob have two values and Alex now one of them. So in 2013, uh, Kalesnikov and Kumari San found that I represent at repetition encoding in AKNP protocol. And if we say C is the K of uh, repetition encode from one bit, to KBIT. So here are now the views of IKNP protocol. Uh, the second row equal to TIXRC of I, and QI equal to uh, T, TI uh, XRC I times X, and both compute two hash values. So now, instead of uh, C at the repetition encoding, uh, they, they replace C at the kinds of uh, error correcting code. <laughs> So their protocol can work for, uh, for any I with a length up to eight bits. So, um, so, it, so that, that is the reason why, uh, previous, uh, why the current PSI protocol only compare eight bits of X and eight bits of Y. So for example, here we have, uh, C, uh, we have C from I three bits length. So Bob compute to a hash values um, by, 
follow these formulas. So the very, uh, so the, the, we have the very important uh, property here is hash of QI, S or CR primes, time S, equal to hash of DI, S or CR primes, S or CRI, time S. So now we look at uh, green colors here. If RI equal to R, um, R primes, so this green color is become to zero. And when we bit Y and X, it become to zero. And it means that we get hash of the I. So in other words, uh, Bob can compute M hash values and at least now one of them. So that is the reason their protocol is called one-off and oblivious chain first. So for the securities, uh, their protocol needs CR primes, XLCI has the Hamming weight more than K. So let's go to the next slide to see uh, the reasons. So this is what Bob, Bob has. He compute hash of QI, XLCR prime, time S. So it means it equal to hash of DI, XLCR primes, XOCI uh, times X. So we need, uh, if uh, I not equal R primes, we need the, the, this expressions looks random to Alex. So uh, we are some, 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 way, uh, some way Alex can guess uh, R primes. So it means he now R, she now R primes, and she now R DI, she now R I. It means she now red colors in this expressions except the blue colors here is. So now if we have C has the minimum, minimum distance K, then the CR primes XOCI has the Hemingway more than K. So it means that Alex must get K bits of X. So, we, uh, so, it mean, so now the, the, this protocol achieves the security. So here is our observations. We, we see that C, we don't need uh, a recording. So we replace C at the kind of uh, random functions. So it varies the very small trick. However, it makes our protocol very powerful. So, so uh, for, if we replace C at the random functions, uh, our protocol can work for any AI with any length. So here, I come with any length. So on the Bob size, C can compute for any R primes. He can C can compute hash of QI X or C R primes times S. So it means that um, so for the correctness, uh, we get the same thing as previous protocol have. So here, Bob can compute any hash values, and at least my my now one of them. So that is the reason we call our protocol a one of infinite uh, OT tensions. So for the security, we need to compute the optimal length for the output C. This is lambda to get the security. So from the two pre previous slides, uh, we have uh, uh, we have this this one, and now we use uh, C as the kind of pseudo random functions. So we just need property of C R primes X or C I has the Hamming bitten ways. Uh, low Hamming distance way is uh, negligible. So that is the, what we need. And we compute C either uh, uh, pseudo random functions with the output len E3.5k. So this is the, what we need for our security uh, pro uh, um, uh, protocol. And it means that we need to extend the width of base OT matrix to 3.5k. So the question now is, do we need to use more base OT than um, to do it? So we use a very small trick called to use pseudo random generators to extend the height of OT matrix to 3.5k. And then we use a matrix transpose to get a width of base OT matrix in 3.5k. So, so at this point, our protocol achieved the security. So here, here is the whole picture of our protocol. And again, if I are uh, not equal to R primes, F of R primes looks random to Alex. 
Oh no, I'm sorry. Look random now. So it means uh, here f of r, r equal to uh, hash of qi xor c, cr time x. And this is exactly of reverse pseudo random functions of f of r. So for each row of OT matrix, uh, we, we, we give we us uh, OT, we have, give, we give us uh, one OT, one OF instance. So that's why we call our, our protocol is bash OPF. And we use different key, QI, for each row, but we have the same X. So we get the batch related key OPF. So that is the reason we call our protocol is batch related key OPF. So now we easy to apply uh, OPF on PSI. Bob send the app of our prams. Uh, to Alex. Alex simple compare f of up i and f of up rams and output whether it's e equal. And if i not equal up rams, uh, uh, f of up rams looks random to Alex. So it means she cannot guess anything about uh, our prams. So this is the private equality test. So uh, so at the results, our protocol uh, doesn't depend on the uh, input length here prams s square s i, and we have three times faster than the current space i protocol. So this is the comparisons of uh, our result on semi honest PSIs. So if we, if uh, PSI using uh, based on the circuits, this is very general problems. And so they have the high running time. So if we do PSI using public keys, they have the best communications. But they have, uh, still have high running time. So based, you know, doing BS, PSI based on OT is a good way, a good protocol now. They have best running time and good communications. So we compare. Uh, with two recent results, uh, recent protocols, we have three times faster than the current uh, PSI. So here is scales in log, log of 10. And we, we almost remove the gap between our protocol to the naive one. And thank you for listening. Yeah. OK, thank you. <laughs> so we have time for some questions. Hi. Yes. So I was just wondering, so if you did the obvious um, OPRF mm -hmm. of just uh, a public key based, like blind, a blind unique signature scheme or something like that. So it's one round of communication, and but you're saying it's way slower than this one. Uh, oh, could you repeat again, please? So, so the, the straightforward way to do this is if you take an OPRF that is just uh, Alice mm -hmm. asked Bob to compute yes. a blind signature yes. on her string, and then Bob gives mm -hmm. the signature on his string, and Alice checks if they're equal, right? And if it's a unique signature scheme, that works great. Um, asterisk, there's a condition. Can't be RSA. But um, so that's very fast, and that works for PSI. You just send all your, all, you get signatures on all your strings. You yeah. send signatures on all his strings. You just take the intersection of the signatures. But you're saying it's going to be slow because. Yeah, I, I understand. So thank you for questions. So because uh, we use OPF, so it means uh, our construction using uh, small public keys and a lot of them use symmetric keys. So that is the reason our protocol is faster than using uh, public keys. Because you're only doing like 128 public key operations. Uh, yeah, we just need 128. Things. Yeah, you can look at. Uh, so here, the metric. Just wait. So the metric key, uh, we use uh, OT tensions inside the OPF um, protocols. So it means that we just use, we just use uh, some public keys, 128. Mm, some kind of. Right. Yes, and we use some symmetric keys. And it's, of course, symmetric keys is cheaper than public key. So. Right. Yeah, okay. thanks.
So the advantage of the simpler scheme is just speed, is what you're saying. Yes, OK. Yeah, thank you. OK, any other questions from the audience? If that's not the case, then thank yeah, you thank for you. your talk.